Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this awesome graph effect. And I'm gonna show you a few techniques on how you can take this graph to the next level. If you're a Flatpak FX crew member, you can download the entire project file, which is included with all of the files. I've also included this bonus composition um, with all of the files as well. so you can basically see how I created this. If you're not already a member, then you can check it out via the link in the description. You'll not only get access to this project file, but all of the project files that I've done for the Flatpak FX crew members. You can check them all out via the link in the description. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a new composition. I'll just call this one new. This can be whatever settings you like. And I'm just gonna grab my US flag here, drag this here on top and just scale it down. And I just wanna add a few effects to this. So what I did to this was I added basically a hue and saturation. You can search for this up here and just drag these settings straight on if you wanna follow along exactly. It'll depend on the image that you're obviously using. But basically I've just dragged down the saturation and the lightness, it kind of darkens that image. I added a bit of a Gaussian blur just to really help us focus more on the graph. I added a CC vignette that just sort of darkens those edges. And just to finish it off, I used a bit of grain, just adds a bit of texture into that. Now, obviously you can use whatever image you like and, and mess around with these settings, but those are the settings um, if you wanna follow along. Otherwise, if you've already got the project file, you can just basically see exactly how I've done it. Next, I wanna basically add a graph over the top. Now, the best way to create this is through a new composition I can call this one graph new, and I'm just gonna add in this image here or a PNG of that graph. Now this is on a transparent background. This could be whatever you like. It could be a different type of graph and image. You just need to remove the background of it. However you do that, there's lots of different methods to removing it. You can do it in Photoshop, import it as an image. It doesn't really matter. Otherwise you could just draw your own using like a the pen tool and then add like a stroke effect over the top. Um, there's lots of different ways, but basically I want to show you how to do this with images because that's most likely how you know, you're going to be doing graphs and things like that. Now what I can do, the advantage of kind of creating that as its own composition is that when I drag this on top, I can now add various things to that composition. And here I've just added basically like a yellow fill and I've added a bit of a glow over the top. It just sort of really helps you know, that graph to stand out over that dark background. Now this is where I wanna get into basically the sort of subject of this video, which is around track mats. This was a question that came through from a Flatpak FX uh, crew member. Basically, I wanna show you just a very simple way that I use track mats. But basically what I would do is I create a solid here and I call this one my mask. And then if I move this off to the side, this becomes basically the track mat for that layer. So you need to hit toggle modes and switches here. But with that graph layer, if I set this to be the mask, that mask that I created acts as the reveal. So the advantage here is that because it's in a composition, if I just change this around or move this graph and this layer automatically just updates the main timeline. It's a much faster and more efficient way of doing it, especially when you've got lots and lots of layers. So if I set my background to also use that, that same mat, I can, that's the advantage there of using track mats. This is the most common way that you're going to be using a track mat. If you hit this button, it'll automatically invert it. So it will basically hide what you're not doing. The other way of doing this is through basically like masks. And the problem with masks is you have to animate all those masks. And if your image changes or you move it around, so does your mask. So this is uh, basically where using track mat is a really, really good option. The other way of using track mats is basically by clicking this and using the luminance, which is where you wanna do like, say like a sky replacement, or you wanna remove like the brighter part of an image or the darker part, you can do that. In this case, because we're just using solid layers, we just want to basically use the track mat as just a basically an alpha mat, which is the most of the time is what you're going to be using it for. Now, this is just the basics of how I'd use a track mat. If you wanna dive even deeper into this subject, then you wanna check out either my Animation Master course if you're a complete beginner or new to After Effects, this is gonna be the best choice for you. I walk you through the absolute basics of never using you know, the program before, right through to creating some really cool animations and effects that stand out. If you're more of an advanced user or you're more comfortable using After Effects, then you wanna check out my Animation Pro course in that I dive 
much deeper into how to create some really cool animations and effects, stuff that I would create for paying clients. I've had hundreds of students go through these courses and get amazing results. You can read all of the testimonials and see everything that's included within these two courses via the links in the description below. If you're looking at taking your videos that you're producing, whether it's just your own personal videos or videos that you wanna put online, then animation is a fantastic way of doing that. And these two courses are really going to help you get to a point that you feel much more comfortable using After Effects. So if you're serious about learning After Effects or serious about learning animation, then definitely check out those two courses via the links in the description. What I can do now with these two is if I create say a camera, I can now just set this to be like 35 millimeters. And what I'm going to do is with that mask, I can now make these, if I switch back all 3D, with that mask, what I'm going to do is just hit P on my keyboard, create a position keyframe, and then scale this across or move it across. And then I can just add basically like an easy ease. The other advantage here of using this as a track map, that if I add a motion blur to that layer, it adds motion blur to those layers that are tracked or map tracked to that layer, if that makes sense. So basically all these layers underneath are automatically gonna have that motion blur applied to them, or at least look like they are because they're being revealed through this mask layer, which has the motion blur on it. Just looks a lot more natural. One of the things that I did here in my original composition was I just added basically like, um, you know, just typed out some text here. So all I did was I just basically got my text tool and just typed out like 1940 here and then like 1950 just kind of space these out however i needed them to be and then because they're all three dimensional what i can do is take those layers and just sort of like move this layer out i can grab my background layer move this back scale this one up maybe scale this layer down move this up and with my camera if I go down to my position and point of interest, I can basically cycle through my camera properties here and just sort of rotate this around. And I can kind of create that really interesting sort of dynamic camera movement really easily. And if I go back to my original composition, this is kind of what it looks like. It just looks a lot more interesting of way of, you know, displaying a graph, you know, versus just having a graph on screen. It just, it just looks a lot more interesting, visually interesting to the viewers. So the advantage here is once I've got it, I can just basically update this composition. It's going to automatically update everything in that composition. So that's the real advantage of using track mats over, you know, having this and then having to basically mask it, you know, having to draw like a mask line and then animate all of that because when you update that image, all of that's going to change. So that's a real advantage. The other thing that I added over the top was I just created a adjustment layer, added a posterized time effect. This just kind of gives it that slow camera sort of jittery low frame rate. Something else I also did was added another graph. I include this in the project file, but basically I just created another composition here, added a flag with a bit of opacity in the background, added another graph with a drop shadow. And because this is all basically as one image, it automatically, because I've set it to be that same mask, I don't have to reanimate anything. It automatically just updates with everything that I need. Now, again, I go through all of this in my courses. You can also check out this composition here with a bonus comp where I show you how to, basically you can see how I've created also like these gradient effects and all these things going a little bit deeper. That's it for this video. Hopefully you've learned a few things. If you like this video, I can give it a thumbs up. You can check out more videos just like this over here on the side of the screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.